Hey everyone, John McKeever here with another video on installing Metal CI. So this is the second video that I've recorded. There's another one which is an introduction and prerequisites where we installed the OpenJDK JVM on our engine. Please do go and have a look at that one first if you haven't already seen that. Uh, today we're going to focus on installing the Metal CI Workbench. We're going to install the service on our data stage engine which is a, a Unix based engine. So we're going to use an RPM file to do that. Uh, then we're going to deploy a license file, generate some public and private keys in order for Workbench to authenticate with third-party services like Git. And we will also generate a Java key store, a certificate in a Java key store that will enable us to run Workbench on HTTPS. So without any further ado, uh, let's jump into our Windows client environment. So this is the Windows client environment you will remember from the first video. And I've got open here a couple of documentation pages from our uh, documentation, which you'll remember is docs.metalci.com. Anything and everything you need to know about Metal CI, you will find hopefully there. And if not, uh, use the search functionality or have a look in the FAQ section. Uh, I'm going to have a look at my downloaded assets again. I went through this in the first video, but importantly today we're looking at uh, this or these. DM Metal CI Workbench. Um, I've got the RPM, which is for data stage engines on Unix, and I've got a uh, setup.exe for engines running on Windows, which I won't be demonstrating today. So this RPM file, uh, the number here tells me that I'm going to be deploying Workbench version 1451. And I have taken those files and uploaded them. I'm just going to jump on into an SSH session onto my engine. And if I go into downloads directory, um, I am EC2 user on this box. Um, this is my data stage engine, demo X engine. And I'm easy to use. And in the downloads directory, I can see that I've got my DM Metal CI Workbench file. And highlighting it has done absolutely nothing to improve its legibility. Sorry about the colors. That first file there, DM Metal CI Workbench. Um, oh, I've got 1434 there. Let me quickly just pop the more recent version up. I'm just going to go into WinSCP. I could have done this before. Apologies. There we go. And let's get rid of 14.34 to remove any confusion. There we go. Okay, 14.51. Okay, that's the version we're going to install. And I'll just pop this on the left-hand side there and the instructions on the right. So if you go to this uh, page in the Metal CI documentation, um, by default, uh, Metal CI installer will create a user account on Unix called MCI Work B, uh, and all of the files will be owned by user MCI Work B, and its primary group will be a group called DStage. If you don't want that, and you want to use some other users and groups, there are some environment variables you can set before running the installer, and the installer will honor the values in those environment variables. Details are in the documentation. But I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to go ahead and install the Workbench service. I've already installed my um, OpenJDK uh, JVM, and I think I showed this in the earlier video. It's helpful if you type correctly, and it's an OpenJDK version 1.8. So I reckon I'm good to go. I'm going to go sudo rpm. I'm not going to copy all of that. I'm just going to copy the first bit because uh, I've got the, the version number kind of commented out. Uh, so that's the RPM I'm going to install, sudo rpm minus u workbench version 1451. As easy as that. And it's installed. It's that quick. And it's given me a couple of tips here. I can start the service by using sudo service workbench start. And then I can go to a URL to have a look at the service. So let's do that. And I'm actually going to do a sudo service status just to check that the service is running. And it is. And I'm 
really keen to have a look at this service running. So I'm going to go to the, when it says server URL, that's your, that's uh, the, the URL for this engine that I'm on. And the quickest way to get that is actually from the login dialog. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to stick it into here, not the project name, but port 8080. So we're running HTTP by default at the moment. And here is our Metal CI setup wizard. So that's up and running and working properly. So what this is going to do is allow me to upload a license file. Uh, I'll provide my default data stage credentials. I will uh, register some uh, authentication keys and I will uh, confirm and we will be up and running. So let's just crack on with that. Upload a license file. So I'll click the upload dialog I have in my downloads Metal CI. Now it's looking for an LIC file. Now um, we, I believe, have distributed a file called license.txt. We're tending to standardize uh, these days on metalci.lic. And the reason that we need to rename this file to metalci.lic is that that is the default license file that Workbench will look for in its home directory. Um, so now I can see it in this dialog. I will open that. And what the setup wizard will do is read that file and parse out from it, uh, the, the encrypted set of bytes in there. So that should be enough for you to get up and running. I'll go next. Uh, it needs to know where my data stage home directory is. It's already found that and pre-populated it for me. I'm happy with that, so I'll go next. And now it's looking for my default data stage credentials used by Metal CI Workbench when interacting with data stage. So for now, I'm going to put in IS admin credentials. Next. That's validating, so it's attempting to use those credentials to connect to data stage now. I won't say that here. Now it's asking for a git access key. So I'm going to allow Setup Wizard to create me a, um, a public-private key pair. I could supply my own if uh, that's what my organization required me to do. And you'll see here it's telling me where that's going to be stored. And opt DMMCI is the default installation directory for the Workbench service on your Unix environment. And here we'll have a file, a public key file, workbench.key.pub. The associated private key is just workbench.key. We'll have a look at those later. Am I happy with all those values? Yes, I am. Submit. That's now writing a set of configuration files, doing a, a bit of setup. And setup is complete. Workbench is now in the process of rebooting. And to go to the logon page, click here. And here we are. So now I will log in with my IS admin credentials. Now you'll see it's prompted me. It's, it's derived my name and it's prompted me for an email address. And I quickly want to tell you why it's done that. If I just go to this tool here, the administration console, And I look at my user account, my IS admin user account. You can see that under additional information, I do not have an email address registered. And Workbench is asking us for that email address um, because it needs it in order to uh, identify commits. So when we're committing to Git repositories, uh, the, the way we identify ourselves is using an email address. Down the line, there are more sophisticated things we can and hopefully will do. Um, uh, but uh, for now, it's just uh, an email address. So I will register myself, and that's created a user account for me uh, in Metal CI Workbench. Important to, to uh, identify also that the credentials that I use to log in to 
Metal CI Workbench are the same that I would use to log into Data Stage Designer. Behind the scenes, it's the same authentication layer. Metal CI Workbench in this regard just acts as another another uh, data stage application on the application service bus. It's 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 using your data stage credentials. So if you change your data stage credentials, you'll also need to use that new password when logging into um, Workbench. Okay, so it's brought us into this for a first page asking us to register a project and that is to tell Metal CI Workbench about a data stage project on uh, our engine. I will do that and everything associated with that, uh, registering Git repositories and uh, issue management systems in a later video. For now, what I want to do, I want, what I want to focus on is getting Metal CI Workbench up and running on HTTPS. So right now I'm running under HTTP. So I'd like to run under HTTPS. So let's go back to our engine and let's go into the installation directory. Okay, so we've installed in uh, opt dmmci and you can see these are all the files that have been created. I won't go through each of these. We'll, we'll probably touch on each of these as we go through the setup uh, processes, but you won't really need to touch um, a lot of them. Uh, those are the two uh, public and private key uh, files that we discussed earlier. Config.yaml is probably the, the file that we're uh, going to touch first because it's the most important. So I'm just going to go on over to another documentation page, which is configuring the Metal CI Workbench to use HTTPS. Okay, so what I want to do here is to generate a, uh, a Java key store that we can reference in our config.yaml file in order to configure HTTPS. So let's, I'll let you read the documentation. Um, it's fairly comprehensive, but I'm just going to go down here and use the example key tool command to generate the files I need. I'm going to copy those out and I'm going to pop it just into Notepad to prepare it. The one thing I need to do with that example is change the reference to my engine. So I'm just going to go here and get my engine reference again because I'm too lazy to type and I'm going to paste it into two locations one here where it says CN equals and another one against the DNS entry okay I'm making uh, this certificate valid for 10 years 3650 days which should be enough when that expires I'll come back and record another demo video for you so that's everything I need to run at the command line. If I have a look now, I've got a workbench.p12 file. You'll also note from the command here that the key store has a password of change it. So if I want to just have a look and validate contents of that key store I've created. I can put that command in, which is again from the documentation, enter my password, change it. And there we can see that I've got um, a certificate ready to use. So the next step is to tell the Workbench service that I want to run using HTTPS. To do that, we're going to add a section to the config.yaml file. And I'm going to do that so it's a little bit clearer. Um, I'm going to start by preparing that in Notepad and then I'll paste it into our environment. Um, path to the key store and path to the trust store. The key store and the trust store are the same things. And an important thing to note here is that these should be fully qualified references. So I need to put the full path in. So here I'll put opt.dm slash mci slash workbench.p12. Same for the trust store. And then the password you'll remember was change it. 
and now I have a section I can stick into the config.yaml file which I will let's try and type a valid command eh? there we go right here's our config.yaml file which has got all kinds of things in we will touch on some of these in subsequent videos but right now uh, it doesn't matter where I stick it I need to stick in a new section which is to, to move us away from the default HTTP and tell the uh, workbench how we're going to run on HTTPS um, another important thing to note is you can configure this you can put a couple more rows in here to get it to run on HTTP and HTTPS uh, simultaneously I don't know if there's much need for that and um, we certainly won't be doing it here but that is technically possible if you want to I'm going to write that file out and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my sudo service workbench and I'm going to stop the workbench service check that it is indeed stopped and start it again and check that it is, it is indeed running and if I go back to Workbench now, you'll see that I can't get to Workbench. That's because we're running on HTTPS on a different port, 8443. That's the port we specified in our entry in config.yaml. And of course, I will need to access that on HTTPS and now we can see that something is responding but our connection is not secure so I'm using Microsoft Edge today for my sins and the way that I can trust the certificate coming back from that endpoint is to go in here click on this icon here look at the details of the certificate and probably the easiest way is to copy that certificate to a file I'll just click next. I'll use the default entry there. I will stick it into, I'll call it workbench.certificate. And I'll stick it somewhere I can find it. Let's just call it in downloads, metal CI, that's fine. Workbench.sir, save that. Next, finished. So now what I need to do is to go to that file, right click and say install certificate. I'll install it for all users on this current machine. I will place the certificate, and you're probably aware of this, um, and if, if not, the, the, uh, this is in the documentation, in the trusted root certification authorities. Okay to that, next finish okay so I've imported the certificate now you will probably if I hit refresh on this endpoint that that won't work so if I cut that and this will vary by browser but I found with edge certainly this version I need to restart the browser and if I go back to my HTTPS endpoint I get my workbench and I will allow um, notifications. I'll go to IS admin, copy my IS admin password, and I'm back into Workbench on HTTPS. So that's everything I need to get going with registering a data stage project and moving on to the next steps, which will be in the next video. Thanks very much.